Good morning, Pasadena, and welcome to the 47th annual Pasadena Mayor's Interfaith Prayer Virtual Non-Breakfast. I'm Melanie Goodyear, Executive Director of Jericho Road Pasadena, and we're proud to organize this year's prayer event as part of our 10th anniversary celebrations. Although it's not quite what we were expecting, we know that coming together to pray for each other and our community is more relevant now than ever. I hope this event brings you reassurance, inspiration, and peace. Jericho Road Pasadena's mission is to bridge gaps. We help nonprofits bridge operational gaps by matching skilled volunteers and board members with local organizations. And we bridge service gaps in the community by convening and training nonprofit leaders, among other services. Bringing our community together is fundamental for everything we do, and we thank the mayor for inviting us to organize this year's prayer breakfast. We have rescheduled the in-person breakfast for Thursday, October 1st, and we greatly appreciate your prayers that we'll all be healthy enough to gather in person by then. Although we can't be together in person today, we can share with one another on social media. Please share your prayers, thoughts, and photos using the hashtag Pasadena Prayer Breakfast. You can follow along using the program found on our website at jrpasadena.org. I would like to begin today's event by acknowledging that this land has been home to the Tongva Nation for 3,500 years. To honor Native American traditions, I offer an excerpt from the Navajo Blessing Way ceremony. The Blessing Way is a two-day ceremony for people who are out of harmony with their community and their world. It realigns them with the beauty or divine order inherent in the world around us. This ancient prayer feels particularly relevant today. In beauty I walk, with beauty before me and beauty behind me I walk, with beauty above me and beauty all around me I walk. It has become beauty again. Today I will walk out. Today everything negative will leave me. I will be as I was before. I will have a cool breeze on my face. I will have a healthy body. I will be happy forever. Nothing will hinder me. I walk with beauty before me. I walk with beauty behind me. I walk with beauty below me. I walk with beauty above me. I walk with beauty all around me. My words will be beautiful. In beauty all day long, may I walk. My prayer for you today, Pasadena, is that you walk in beauty, that when you feel worry or grief, you take a moment to realign yourself by looking at the stunning San Gabriel Mountains, by taking an online tour of Pasadena's diverse architecture or wonderful museums, and most importantly, that you connect with the kind and generous people of our community. May you walk in beauty today and always. And now I'd like to introduce our mayor, Terry Tornick. Good morning. I'm delighted to join you all in this commemoration of the National Day of Prayer. This event has a 68-year history nationally, 47 years in Pasadena. This year, things are different in that we cannot be together physically, but more importantly, we can join together spiritually as a community, and I am grateful that we're able to do that. The stated purpose of the annual Pasadena Mayor's Interfaith Prayer Breakfast is to gather the community on or near the National Day of Prayer with its civic, business, religious, and educational leaders under a faith-based umbrella to seek spiritual guidance and blessing for our city and its people. There is sometimes confusion and even controversy surrounding the issue of separation of church and state. The United States is a nation that respects and values religion. However, we must be careful not to select any particular religion, nor to impose religious practices on anyone. I don't find any conflict in maintaining that balance. Moreover, in times of trouble, we always turn to religion for support and relief, and one of those times is now. So I have embraced today's event to reflect Pasadena's use of prayer as a method to renew our commitment to peace, to economic and social justice, to civil liberties, to our environment, and to human rights. And right now, to supporting each other, even as we are forced to be apart. 
Thank you all for joining us today in that effort. In that spirit, I ask you to join me in a prayer for our city. Dear God, in this uncertain and frightening time, we ask that you bless the people of Pasadena with courage and patience and the compassion to support those who are most in need. Also, please give us the wisdom to do the right thing. Amen. This year, under the most difficult imaginable circumstances, event management has been transferred from Friends Indeed to Jericho Road, Pasadena, under the leadership of Melanie Goodyear. Jericho Road Pasadena's event planning committee had the insight to organize this virtual event to supplement our rescheduled in-person breakfast on October 1st. I also want to acknowledge the long history of Pasadena Media's coverage of the breakfast and their special help with assembling this virtual version. What will follow is a series of prayers from local clergy and some musical interludes that are intended to uplift you and to bring you hope and peace. To offer a prayer to a group this diverse at a time as hard and complex as this, we need to back off from any particular religion or narrow focus and just be honest, humble, and reverential. Here's what I would like to offer this morning. We gather together in this socially lonely way because we need to feel together, especially when we're socially lonely. We pray for the same things we always do, for hope to overcome fear, for optimism in the face of agonizing ignorance. We have all been wounded by these infectious times. Ourselves, those we love, the victims we know first or second hand. We are flooded with anxiety and trepidation before a future still cruelly hidden from us. And so, alone together, let us remember the things we do know. We are not alone, even though we can't touch or hold each other. Our attitude, our refusal to lose hope, is always one of our most empowering tools. Our humility, rather than a weakness, comes from the same root as our humanity and can lend us the quiet and soft power we need now. No one knows what to do right now. Opinions differ, needs differ, strengths differ. So we may let go of any inappropriate arrogance and premature certainty. It is not rude to relax a bit, to trust that as other seemingly impossible problems have been resolved, so will this one. The light at the end of the tunnel will almost surely not be a train, but a new day, a new start for our people, our economy, our wounded society. No one single leader or small group of leaders will solve today's problems. That will best be done by all of us together, open to the many insights and gifts resting between us, for official experts are often expert at being wrong. And so we gather here, together though alone, loaded with love, hope, trust, humility, openness, compassion, imagination, and courage. Will they again be enough? Yes, yes, they will again be enough. Yes, we will touch, hold each other, work and laugh together again. In this, we can have faith, and that collective faith makes us stronger, lets us endure and persevere. So let us be grateful for these complex gifts of love, life, faith, and hope and let them magnify us individually and together 
as they always have. We pray on behalf of these hopes with open hearts, honest souls, and a humble reverence for these lives which have been given to us. Amen.
Good morning. On behalf of the Islamic Center of Southern California, Assalamu Alaikum. This is the Islamic greeting, which means peace be upon you. I hope you and all of your families are safe and healthy. It is an honor to participate in this virtual interfaith prayer. I commend Mayor Tornick and Jericho Road for continuing with this tradition in a virtual way and to thank them for asking the Islamic Center of Southern California to participate. Just like last year, this year event falls during the holy month of Ramadan for Muslims. It is a month of fasting and sacrificing from our normal routine in order to become closer and more conscious of God. Personally for me, Ramadan could not have come at a better time. We all face challenges throughout our lives, sometimes individually and sometimes as a society. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought both of these together. From our shared histories of the messengers of God, we know that they were all tested in their lives. As a Muslim, understanding the lives of prophets, Adam, Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon them all. We understand they had extreme challenges and difficulties in their lives far greater than what we face today. And if they, who were the closest and most dear to God, were tested, then of course we understand that we will also be tested. And this should give us perspective and reassurance. For as Muslims, we believe that God tests those that are closest and most dear to him. In addition, God says in the Quran that he will never give us a burden that he knows we cannot bear. During these times, we find out who we are as individuals and as a society. It is how our faith in God is tested. It is how we build resiliency and character and in turn increase our love and belief in God. I would like to share a few verses from the Quran, chapter 2, verses 155 through 157. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And we will surely test you with something of fear and hunger and a loss of wealth and lives and fruits. But give good tidings to the patient who in disaster strikes them say, indeed we belong to God and indeed to him we will return. Those are the ones upon whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy. And it is those who are the rightly guided. Through these verses, God is telling us how to respond to difficulty. That is with patience and by turning to God. During Ramadan, we are taught to be more patient with others, increase our prayer and reading of the Quran to be closer to God and to be more kind and caring and to give more in charity to help those in need. And we are given the hope that by being all of these characteristics and by turning to God, that we will be given his blessings and his mercy. If we apply this to our life right now, yes, the COVID-19 virus is what has led to uncertainty and apprehension. But we have to be patient and sacrifice some of our normal routine and donate and help those in need. We are staying at home, limited in our work, limited in our visiting to shop, eating simpler foods, and not even being able to attend our religious services in person. Yet, despite the current situation, we still have so much to be thankful for and hopeful for. And if we are patient, charitable and thankful for what we have during this time, God willing, things will improve. I pray that the current situation continues to ease and improve with God's mercy. May God bless you all and peace be upon you all. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Pastor Kerwin Manning. I'm the head coach of Pasadena Church, the church with no limits. And I'm just so glad to be a part of this wonderful event today with you. And so glad that our city is not stopping, but we're still praying together. We're still unified like never before. Um, I just wanted to share real quickly. Um, they tell me that music has the ability to cross both hemispheres of the brain, allowing us retain to retain the message. So I thought I'd just sing a course of a little song for you. And then we just pray a prayer of agreement. It comes from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11.
plans to prosper you. They are plans never to harm you. They are plans to give you hope and a future. These are the plans. These are the plans. These are the plans. And in these trying times, we must trust and know that God's plans for us are greater than what we're experiencing in this moment. And it won't be long before we'll be able to come back together and reunite with one another in the ways that we're accustomed to. But until then, we must trust that the unity of the spirit is greater than any type of gathering we could have. And on this day, we want to agree and ask the Lord's blessing over our mayor. Um, the mayor knows that I love praying for him and praying for our city council, and I'd love for you to agree with me in prayer. Father, thank you for this opportunity to pray for our mayor. We pray for Mayor Turnick. We pray for his family. We pray, God, for his entire staff, Father. We pray for the city council. We pray for our city manager, Lord. We pray, especially today, for all of the essential workers, Lord, who are going out every day, Lord God. And we ask your blessing over our city. We pray for the peace of this city. We pray, God, for the protection of our citizens, Lord. We, we we grieve with those who are grieving, Lord God. Our hearts go out to those who have lost loved ones. But Father, we're determined, Lord, to stand with them and to see your salvation, Lord God, come to all of us. So Lord, on this special day, as the community is praying together, we just ask your blessing over Pasadena, over our mayor, over our council, and over everyone listening in and watching in this broadcast. We thank you because we know that your plans for us are indeed to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. We love you, God, and we ask these things in the name of Jesus, we pray. These are the plans. These are the plans. These are the plans. These are the plans. These are the plans God has.
Shalom Pasadenans and Brochim Habaim, a blessing of welcome on all who have come together to share this important moment. My name is John Carrier. I'm the rabbi at Pasadena Jewish Temple and Center. And I want to extend a special blessing of gratitude to Mayor Tornick and his office for hosting this commemoration of a national day of prayer and uh, say some special words of thanks to Jericho Road Pasadena for organizing this year's event in unusual times. So all the more so you are to be committed for your efforts and God willing, we'll do some great work uh, together in the future. And I hope this moment brings attention to the work that you do uh, in ways that uh, all people of Pasadena can benefit. I wanna share with you not a unique blessing for this moment, but bring to this moment two special blessings that we say every single week in Pasadena on Shabbat morning, on our Saturday morning services. Uh, this is a thing that we say during our Torah service when we are opening up the book of our tradition to learn, uh, to be better human beings and to do better work in the world. One is a blessing that we say for our leaders, for our leaders of the city, for the leaders of our state, for our country and the leaders of all nations. And we call upon the Holy One, the source of all of our blessings, to bless our leaders with wisdom so that they may administer all affairs of state fairly with justice and compassion for all so that people of all nations, people of all races, people of all faiths can come together in a spirit of true harmony and continue the ongoing work of healing the world. Another blessing that we say at this time is what we call Rafua Shlema, blessing of complete healing. We call upon the Holy One who blessed our ancestors with prosperity, uh, with protection, and with healing to bless all those in need of healing today with Rafua Shlema, a complete healing, a complete peace, not just of their bodies, but also their souls. We say Rafuata Nefesh or Rafuata Guf. Uh, we ask that all those who need healing get complete healing of body, but also of spirit, acknowledging that with illness, with uncertainty, uh, comes a detriment of spirit. Uh, people need healing, not just physically, but psychologically, uh, emotionally, and spiritually. And so we call upon the ultimate source of our blessings to bless them with complete healing of body and soul, and also to bless all those who care for those people with strength, wisdom, and comfort in this challenging time. So on behalf of Pasadena Jewish Temple and Center, I would like to extend our blessings to the entire Pasadena community for peace, for prosperity, for comfort, for healing of body and soul, and once more extend my gratitude to Mayor Tornick and his office and to Jericho Road Pasadena for convening this important moment. Until next time, I look forward to working with you uh, in the important work that we have ahead, and I bless you with peace, healing, comfort, wisdom, and strength. Be well, Pasadena. Peace. Good morning. Buenos dias. My name is Alfredo Ferregrino. I am an Episcopal priest at All Saints Episcopal Church in Pasadena, and I am so grateful to be here with all of you today. Mi nombre es Alfredo Ferregrino. Soy sacerdote episcopal en la Iglesia Episcopal de Todos los Santos en Pasadena. Y estoy muy agradecido de estar aquí con todos ustedes hoy. We live in a world now where our lives are changing rapidly. Vivimos en un mundo ahora donde nuestras vidas están cambiando rápidamente. We live in a world where our foundations are falling away, leaving us nothing solid to hang on to. Vivimos en un mundo donde nuestros cimientos se están derrumbando, dejándonos nada sólido a que aferrarnos. So, it is very important that we do not lose confidence in God at this time. 
Por lo tanto, es muy importante que no perdamos la confianza en Dios en este momento. It is important to know that God has been and continues to be active in our lives. Es importante saber que Dios ha sido y sigue estando activo en nuestras vidas. Please know that God is walking with us even if we don't see God or sense God. Por favor sepan que Dios está caminando con nosotros incluso si no lo vemos o no lo sentimos. So, I would like to offer a prayer for encouragement and hope for this day. Por lo tanto, me gustaría ofrecer una oración de aliento y esperanza para este día. Let us pray. Oremos. God of many names. Dios de muchos nombres. God of truth. Dios de la verdad, Father and Mother of all, Padre y Madre de todos, Giver of life, Dador de la vida, blow your divine breath into us, sopla tu aliento divino en nosotros, steer our hearts, agita nuestros corazones, refresh our souls, Refresca nuestras almas and renew our spirits y renueva nuestro espíritu. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead us. Envía tu luz y tu verdad para que nos guíen. Guide us as we navigate into the unknown. Guíanos mientras navegamos hacia lo desconocido. Inspire us to find comfort in you. Inspíranos a encontrar consuelo en ti. Help us to recognize that we are one. Ayúdanos a reconocer que somos uno. And unite us in bonds of love. Y únenos en lazos de amor. Help us this day to grow in wisdom, grace, and knowledge. Ayúdanos este día a crecer en sabiduría, gracia, y conocimiento. Help us this day to grow in kindness, compassion, and love. Ayúdanos este día a crecer en bondad, compasión, y amor. Let us remember that together and with your help we will overcome any crisis. No olvidemos recordar que juntos y con tu ayuda superaremos cualquier crisis. Let us remember that together and with your help a new and a better world is possible. No olvidemos recordar que juntos y con tu ayuda es posible un mundo nuevo y mejor. Send down upon those who gather in our local government, in our communities, and in our country, the spirit of unity and goodwill. Envía sobre los que se reúnen en nuestro gobierno local, en nuestras comunidades y en nuestro país, el espíritu de unidad y de buena voluntad. Let us rely only on you. Permítenos confiar solo en ti. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Todo esto lo pedimos en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. I hope that you all found our program to be as uplifting as I did. Again, thank you to Jericho Road, Pasadena, and to all of our participants for putting this together. Our city and its people will survive this pandemic with our sense of community intact, in fact, strengthened. Pray for Pasadena. We hope to see you all in person on October 1st under happier circumstances. 
Stay safe.